Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm joined today by Sam Clark, the CEO of Terran Biosciences. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for uh, having me out. Oh, well, it's great to be here. We're at Wonderland in Miami. This is the first year of a, what I would call a crossover event between the psychedelics industry, which has been in this industry for quite a long time now, and longevity, which is this emerging space. And uh, very interesting in your presentation yesterday because you're crossing over, as we'd see it, into the likes of Alzheimer's disease, one of those very big diseases of aging, uh, and using technology that supports uh, psychedelics such as MDNA, um, LSD. So these are terms that in our industry we don't hear very often, but your presentation was very compelling, Sam. So maybe just talk a little bit about the background and origin story of your technology. Oh, absolutely. So first, let me just tell you a little bit about Terran. I founded Terran in 2017, really with the goal of building um, a new kind of company. And it's grown into a platform company where we develop both traditional neuropsychiatric drugs and for Alzheimer's, for uh, mental health, and also psychedelics. Now, we have a number of compounds that have a direct application in longevity space uh, in both psychedelics and longevity. But I want to just make it clear kind of how we approach this. Mm -hmm. So. For us, longevity means two things. It means treating neurodegenerative disorders, but it also means healthy aging. Now that doesn't mean that any of our compounds necessarily will make you live longer or make you live forever, for example. But what they do is that, or what we believe they'll do, is that they will, as you age, um, help stop some of the neurodegeneration uh, at, of aging. I'll give you an example. As we age, uh, some studies report the brain actually shrinks shockingly rapidly, right. with some reports saying up to 5% every decade after age 40. Now, to help that, and that's independent of Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease or any neurodegenerative disease, the brain is just shrinking. Mm -hmm. And with some of, so to address that, we looked to psychedelics because in psychedelics, we saw compounds that were really exciting for their neuroregenerative capabilities. Right, and is, it, is your background in psychedelics? Did you come from that, that industry so before? My background is actually uh, in uh, medicine. And okay. so my background is I did my undergrad degree in neuroscience at MIT and my MD and PhD at Columbia. And then I had been uh, affected by a number of family members and friends who had struggled with mental illnesses. And I wanted to help develop new therapies for people that suffering from these terrible disorders and I became aware there's just there's a lack of, of good ones. Mm -hmm. So in 2017 I left my career in medicine and academia to found Terran Biosciences to really try to help fix this. Great so um, in terms of the the work that you shared yesterday in your presentation so you've got some very interesting studies going on where you're doing placebo-controlled studies which are based on your platform so uh, obviously, you've got work going on in the lab, but you've got very physical work going on with MRI scans and so on. So could you maybe just talk us through that? Sure. We have a couple of technologies there. First, I'll talk about the longevity-based uh, psychedelic crossover that we're working on. And that's a compound that originated out of a number of academic studies. So at the time, Terran had been very interested in psychedelics because of their neuroregenerative capabilities as well as their therapeutic capabilities. I'll give you an example. We saw studies showing psychedelics could do two things. They had therapeutic potential, that is to say they could act as rapid antidepressants and work on other uh, mental health disorders. Mm -hmm. And there were studies coming out that they had neuroregenerative potential. They were able to help cause something called adult, adult neurogenesis, which is the growth or regrowth of neurons in the adult brain right. and critical reopen critical windows of synaptic plasticity that are thought to not occur since uh, infant, uh, infancy and childhood in adult humans. So in that sense, um, we were very excited. But there was a downside. And the downside was that psychedelics come with a big trip. Now, we know the trip can be very helpful for some people with psychiatric disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder, where mm -hmm. you need that psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy to work through you know, those life issues. Yeah. But for people that just want the rapid antidepressant effect, or they want some of the neuroregenerative effect, that trip becomes a big barrier for patient access. Right. Because with a regulatory authority saying, look, this is something that has to be given in a hospital or a doctor's office, 
uh, in that sense, uh, the psychedelics last a long time. You know, LSD can last up to 12 hours in some people. So, and so yeah. you have to be supervised and, and there's quite a yeah. complex medical wrapper that needs to go around that. Exactly. And that can represent a big financial hurdle for patients. Mm -hmm. So then we came across some academic inventions uh, developed in labs across the world. And one of the big ones was coming out of uh, Dr. Jordi Reba's work. Uh, he was a pioneer in understanding how DMT works in the brain. And the scientists asked the question, they said, well, we know psychedelics hit a lot of receptors in the brain. That's a known fact. And we also know that only one of those receptors is responsible for the hallucinations. That's the serotonin 2A receptor. That's interesting because I looked at your slides and I thought serotonin was just a thing. Not, yeah. There are variations of that. So it's this specific receptor that you're targeting. Yes. So, and this comes out of that discovery, those scientists said, well, look, you've got a lot of different serotonin receptors. Psychedelics are also acting the dopamine receptors, norepinephrine receptor, track B receptor for BDNF and growth factor. And then they said, well, what would happen if you took a psychedelic that's hitting all those receptors in the brain? You can think of it all, all these fingers. And we combine it with a second compound that only blocks one, the serotonin 2A. That would block just one in the brain, but allow the psychedelic to do everything else. Could you then remove the trip, but maintain the efficacy by allowing the psychedelic to hit everything else that it normally is? And the mechanism, so what's happening when that psychedelic's hitting, hitting the brain? I mean, is it actually reconnecting synapses? Is it, is, it, is it regrowing connections? What's it actually doing? Well, we can talk a little bit about what we've seen in functional imaging studies, mm -hmm. where it seems to be able to change some of the functional network connectivity between how some of the different subregions of the brain are talking to each other. Right. And then the preclinical animal studies have also shown full regrowth of neurons, new neurons, new synapses forming. So there's a whole bunch of potential mechanisms ongoing. So when those scientists asked that question, they did that combination and they found that in all of these uh, preclinical studies, the effect of the psychedelic was maintained without any um, of the behavioral effects produced by potential trips. So you don't need, their conclusion was you don't need the serotonin 2A effect mm -hmm. to actually have the therapeutic effect. Interesting, just, just to explore that slightly. So, so in terms of uh, the intervention, is that really starting to reverse Alzheimer's in the, in the, conceptually? Are you, you've got patients that are experiencing Alzheimer's, you're actually able to, to wind that back? Is that what's happening? Well, we don't know for sure because to my knowledge, there hasn't been a study of a psychedelic yet in Alzheimer's disease. Right. But what the, um, the hope is that because some of these psychedelics may be able to regrow the, the brain in human, potentially, that areas of the brain where there's been damage or amount lost, um, that you could potentially regrow that by taking a psychedelic. But the big breakthrough here is that you take the psychedelic in a special pill that's combined with the serotonin to a blocker so that you do not have the trip. Right. And we think that would help uh, bring this medication to elderly patients and to patients worldwide where they would be taking this pill that it has a psychedelic that's already been shown safe and effective like DMT, MDMA, or, actually DMT, LSD, or psilocybin, and then combined with a selective serotonin receptor blocker uh, to maintain the therapeutic effect of the psychedelic but no trip. And right. that could potentially be a take-home medicine. Right. I was going to ask uh, you. I mean, unsupervised in terms of what you would have to do. conceptually. Then that appeal. is the hope that that's right. that, that would be the the path. Wow, amazing. So I know that your 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 company is a very interesting one. Really, I'd just, you're a discovery platform, as I would classify you. But you're you're mixing obviously AI, but also imaging. Um, how does how does the technology work? Wait, and, and and likewise, once you've now discussed that, is what is what is the business model for, right. for your business? Well. There's a couple things I want to talk about, and we'll address one at a time. The first is just to finish out the discussion of the fixed dose psychedelic without the trip. Uh, we did a data analysis study, and that was the aha moment, where we looked at the uh, clinical imaging study where people had taken LSD. Well, first they took placebo and they got a baseline functional MRI. Then they took LSD, had an intense trip, and got their functional MRI. And it showed that LSD is rewiring the brain, it's changing the functional connectivity. But then they took a 2A serotonin 2A blocker plus LSD got another scan and showed 
the same functional connectivity rewiring in the brain. Right. That it was the aha moment for us. Okay. And that's that imaging study I presented on yesterday that shows psychedelics without the trip, with the trip blocked, you can still have the functional connectivity change. And that's what's supporting our development of the fix those combination. So as a platform company, to answer your question, we then went and partnered with Santa Fe right. in France and acquired the worldwide exclusive rights in a license agreement for the selective serotonin two-way blockers, eplivancerin and bolinancerin. Right. And then we also ramped up our psychedelic manufacturing and have been working on combining those two to develop that take-home medication. Interesting. So, so with Sanofi, for example, obviously, you know, they're a very established pharmaceutical. They have all of the, the routes to market. They've got that ability to roll out products and services around the world, products probably more than services. Uh, how does that work for you then? Because obviously you've got to build all of that, presumably, in terms of your commercial channels. I think we have a lot of potential options for commercialization. You know, one option would be a big pharma partner, but we've also seen companies um, go to market, you know, prepare to go to market themselves. We've seen that in the schizophrenia space as well with companies like Karuna Therapeutics, uh, Car XT, and other compounds. So I think there is definitely um, a lot of potential for either partnerships, um, co development deals, or take it to market yourself. Right. Okay. Interesting. So, in terms of just staying on um, uh, the, the, the conceptual part of the business, then, mm -hmm. so, so your model is looking at a multi channel approach to, to market. So, you're, you're licensing in, uh, are you licensing out as well at the moment? We're doing both. And so, the comp so, we licensed Idazoxan from Pierre Fabre. That's a compound that had been through 500 patients' safety trial before and had been shown to be safe. They'd taken all the way through phase three for Parkinson's tremor. wasn't very effective in the tremor. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they had phase two studies ongoing for schizophrenia where it was shown to be incredibly effective. Right. And you'd add it onto the patient's baseline antipsychotic regimen, and it would double the efficacy. Now, the only downside was you had to take it three times a day. Right. And so it was deemed unfixable, they shelved development. We then went, licensed the drug, acquired the worldwide exclusive rights, built a team of experts around it, brought it back into the clinic where it's now, we've produced a nice once daily release profile. So it's now a once daily pill, where we now believe because it's previously shown efficacy in schizophrenia, this could be a great adjunctive treatment for schizophrenia. And it's been used in dementia before in uh, adult humans. And a great study just came out in science a couple of years back showing it could be disease modifying and prevent neurodegeneration of the brain and reverse neurodegeneration in yeah. preclinical models. So, so we're very excited. Yeah, that is very, very, very appealing, obviously, conceptually. So in terms of where you are now, um, looking at Alzheimer's and, and wider neurodegenerative diseases of aging, do you see that this is going to be a therapeutic for people that have got those conditions? Or would you see that there is a preventative element to this as well, where perhaps people in their 50s start taking this as part of their I think there are, we have two uh, things on board right now. Right. For the psychedelic, that could be both preventative without the trip and um, as a treatment. And the same thing for idazoxan, the drug from Pierre Fabre where it could be, you know, potentially you have Alzheimer's, the potential application could be then you take it and start treating. But the animal models showed that if you take it early, you could, it would have a great preventative effect. And so this could be in people who are at risk or have a family history, they start taking this and it provides a preventative effect. Mm -hmm. But that leads to our next big program, which is we are the first people in history to bring the aging biomarker neuromelanin uh, to an FDA cleared product now. And we just got FDA clearance to bring our neuromelanin imaging system to the market where people can get neuromelanin scans uh, as they age to help assess uh, the health of, um, of the brain. Wow, that's really impressive. So, so when you say FDA clearance, is that FDA clearance for markets or is that FDA clearance for clinical development? This is FDA clearance to market. Wow. As an adjunctive um, scan, where doctors can use this as adjunctive information as they make clinical decisions. And I'll give you a little example of why we're so excited about this application to aging and longevity. Neuromelanin is a breakdown product of dopamine. You know, we all have dopamine in our brains. So every day, a little bit breaks down and it binds to iron. And as you age, you build up neuromelanin in different parts of your brain. Now, Neuromelanin can also be used, and it's been used clinically in hundreds of patients in research studies for the last 20 years, 
in different studies of aging and neurodegenerative conditions and looking at the patterns and how that uh, works. And then different doctors have said, look, one doctor who founded the um, Gordon Conference on um, Parkinson's disease said, I recommend that every person over age 40 get a neuromelanin scan every 10 years. Right. But the problem was nobody could actually get this FDA cleared because there was no way to fully automate and standardize this measurement. Mm -hmm. Columbia University figured out a way. We licensed the technology from them, built a team of experts around it, and then took it to the FDA and took their academic invention into a full, fully deployable cloud-based system that now can uh, work with any hospital and remotely analyze those MRIs for neuromelanin and send back a result within 30 minutes. Wow, that's amazing. We're really excited about that. We submitted to the FDA for clearance and in a major win for uh, patients now, it is now cleared for adjunctive use. Right, wonderful. So Sam, this all sounds really impressive and very exciting work that's going on. So I don't understand the size of your organization and your capitalization and that. So let's just talk about that corporately. Where are you guys now? Yeah. So we closed a Series B round uh, last year. Uh, moving towards uh, Series C and some big milestones. And we're really excited because we hit every milestone from Series B. And um, we also take a little bit of a unique approach to team building. So unlike a traditional biopharma, we have that hierarchical top-down approach to management drug development. Yeah. At Terran, we actually have a very small, lean team of highly trained operators. And then they go around building out individual teams, world experts around solving specific problems. That enables us to dramatically cut the cost of drug development and run very lean and also accomplish um, a number of things very quickly. Yeah, wonderful. Well, Sam, great work that you're doing and uh, thanks for your time today. It's been fascinating. Thank you. Thank great. you very much. Thanks.